Hello, I'm Yal from Revival Acres, where we're growing a digital feast to revive homes, hearts, and your family's health. Today, I'm talking about free math curricula. Yes, it exists, it's wonderful, and you can do it, and your children will have a wonderful, well-rounded mastery education in mathematics. Now, I did do a raise arithmetic video, and I did use that for a time with my children. I didn't love <laughs> that it repeated itself a lot, and I found a different curriculum that I like better personally. I know many people use raise arithmetic, they love it, it serves their family well. And I say, keep doing that if it's working for you. But if you're looking for something that's a little different, um, this is a little tiny bit more modern and by modern, I mean like 1920s. <laughs> so these books that I have, the number stories books, you can access, access them, I think on Google Books or Gutenberg. I'll find the link for you. If not, you should be able to find hard copies. It's the Scott Forsman and Company. They came out with different ones for different school districts, I think, as the years progress. So they're not all exactly alike, but they're so close. If you're doing Charlotte Mason, you wouldn't start till age six. I started at age five because my student wanted to feel like she was doing school. She wanted to be involved. Um, and I didn't want to push her, but she had interest. And these are so simple. It's your reading stories. So even though it's technically starting school, it's such a natural way to do school, just like Charlotte Mason encouraged letters. Even at a young age, you can play with letters and um, build words if they ask you to build words and say the sounds, that's totally fine. And um, it's just not a rigorous approach. And so these books serve well in those early years of interest. So it begins with stories and then there's also work pages, all done verbally. So you just work yourself or work uh, through these stories. And it follows a family, uh, a brother and sister, Bobby and Betty. And then there's like monkeys, you end up counting the monkeys. And then the monkey, little Jojo's naughty and he runs away. And it just follows stories. But on the pages, there'll be a story about the monkeys here. And then the next page, her two pages, will look like, maybe like this. And it will say, how many monkeys are here? And then you just count the monkeys together. How many monkeys are small? And then how many coconuts? Which coconuts are big? Which ones are small? And it progresses through, you know, comparing big, small. But it uses these really fun stories and pictures. And then you start um, identifying numbers. You know, where's the number one? And then you have them point to the number one. But it's all verbal. And this is true to Charlotte Mason and true to language acquisition anyways. You always do verbal before you do any written. Think about learning English. As I have a little one-year-old and she's already learning to say things. She would have no concept, no idea if I showed her the word this, which is her favorite word. <laughs> and she, would, she, had no, she had no idea what that would be. It's all verbal. So you're working through this book verbally. And then you'll go to a new story. So next is Frisky and Tubby the Bears. And then you work through that story. And it just continues on. And I believe, oh, it does introduce money early on. Money is very visual. You can definitely do that. And I encourage you to get real money and uh, have coins out and work with the coins. Very simple, very gentle. So this is book one, five, six-year-old. Then if you can get it. Some of the covers might look different, but this is book two. Same type of idea, but now you're starting to get into more math concepts. You can start writing if your child's ready for it using, um, you could use a chalkboard would be really great because it's a little bit bigger. But look, Betty and Bobby have gotten a little bit older and you're following their family through. And then you're gonna start to see more numbers used a little bit more money. You'll go into time and days of the week a little bit and then counting by tens. And still you're gonna work with taller, smaller. Um, you go into rulers a little bit and like if you, you know, practical, get that ruler out, show them what it looks like, um, but very, very gentle. And then you'll have these rows of math problems. Verbally is so nice. I love the verbal. We're gonna finish up this book uh, at the beginning of the year, 
and then move into the next uh, curriculum that I have. But that's the beauty of using books. If you don't, if you don't uh, finish it or you need to take a break, put a bookmark sticker <laughs> in here, close the book, and you'll come back to it next year or next term or whatever it may be. It's so easy, so gentle. There's no sense of like rushing, trying to get through, um, making your child feel bad because they didn't finish their workbook. None of that. It's a book, we'll come back to it, no worries. Then we move into the free. This is absolutely free. I will send you the website um, where all the links are for this book. And it's, I like it, like I said, better than Ray's um, because it offers a variety and there's a little more pictures and things like that in it. And my students have loved it. So my, so my daughter was in second grade and she did this book. Now I made this front cover because I thought it was fun and I want it to be pretty. But it is called First Year in Number by Franklin S. Hoyt. And I, again, will send you or post the link below. What I love about this, like I said, it starts very simply. This was meant to be a book like this. So if you were to find this, and I've not been able to find a vintage edition of this, it would have probably looked like this. But what I do is I print it out and I use it like a workbook. So they can color in it, they can write and start practicing their numbers. Uh, and they really like that, as you can see. Uh, so she wanted to practice writing her number words. And you're just counting and, and then I could say there are how many girls in this picture and she would count them out and you know so you're using the concepts that you used in those other books and you can apply them here because you already know those types of questions she or he already knows how you're asking them and how to answer them so you can do more than what's on the page too and you could even start simple addition that early on like here's bunnies at the top I see one bunny what if two more bunnies came how many bunnies would there be and they could easily use the pictures to help them. So it continues on, and then it goes into using sticks to build things. Now you could get uh, toothpicks, and you could build these shapes with toothpicks and talk about how many toothpicks it took to build a box or a fan that looked like this, and you just work through it. And then as the year goes on, you start to add, uh, bring in addition. And now, like I said, this would have been a book, not a workbook, but I like to use it. It makes it so much easier. So she just writes her answers right on her page. It's fine with me. I do have a graph notebook for her. When it gets to measuring, you will have to use a graph notebook because when you print this out, the inches aren't an inch. They've been like pulled, they've been um, elongated by the printer. So that's one thing to be mindful of when it gets to the, uh, the measuring pages, you're gonna have to help and uh, just do it in a graph notebook for them, like one inch squares. So like I said, they love to just write in it. And then I go through and help them check or whatever. And then typically they'll do one page a day. Now this one had a lot of problems on it. So I might've divided this page in half or I don't know. I saw a lot of the problems were very similar and she was doing a really great job. So I just X'd out the bottom and said, you know what, it's fine. You don't wanna exhaust them. You know, a change in subject is as good as a break. That's a paraphrase to something that Charlotte Mason would have said. Um, so, you know, 10, 15 minutes you're doing this and if you start, start noticing fatigue, just move on. Shut the page, draw a line, we'll do this tomorrow, don't worry about it. All right, yeah, so here is the measuring. So these lines are uh, meant to be an inch long, and if they were in the book, they would have been an inch long or um, a half an inch. So you'll have to draw this out in a graph paper and just use the questions and be a little bit more hands-on when it comes to this page. So it keeps going, and then here's another. It goes into time. Now there are Roman numerals on these clocks. That's okay. They need to learn Roman numerals. Learn Roman numerals. You could draw a clock and do the, uh, the numerical, you know, the numbers on them as well but I just wanted to make you aware of that. Progresses through, you build tables, you also place stores. So you could say, I want to buy a teacup and an apple. How much money do I need? And the teacup was three cents and the apple is two cents. So now this money is very small compared to what we pay today because it's vintage. You could change these numbers if you wanted it to be um, a little bit more expensive <laughs> as it is today. Uh, so it goes through, and in the back, there's also games that you can play, set up, or games for drill. Then it'll have all your times tables, and then you can work through, it says review of combinations. So this would be the end of the year, your review of addition and subtraction. 
Now there are no tests. There are review pages. We don't do tests. We just do every, a page a day typically. And I'm amazed at how much my daughter has learned through doing this. When we started multiplication, it does, um, I think all the way up to fives in multiplication in this book. I noticed that she wasn't really getting it. Um, so we took a week off and we just did multiplication flashcards. And that's her whole week of math. We just got them down. And then we picked up our book again and we started again. And that was a really big help. And now that she's had a break this summer, she's doing math like that was difficult for her at the end of the year, but she's had time to process and take a break and apply it to her life. And she's retained it and she's learning even though I'm not teaching. So that is my favorite free math. And it keeps going up. So this was first year in numbers then it'll all the way up through. Now, because these are meant to be books, you might end up doing, as they get thicker, you might end up using it for two years or a year and a half. And just be mindful of that because that's how vintage texts were used. They um, weren't limiting to age or grade because um, schoolhouse, right? Same thing with forms. Your, you know, form one had technically six, seven and um, eight year olds in it. But it was so beautiful because you could be at the third grade level for reading, but the first grade level of math, but you're still in form one and it's okay. So just remember that as you're working through this book. I wanted to share one more resource that I really love. These are flashcards and I can link them. Um, and these are the subtraction ones, but there's other ones as well. And I wanted to show you what they look like because I really love them. And they come with ideas too of how to use them. But they use real life uh, fruit as to help you. So it's eight minus three, and then it will have the fruit on the side to help you. And then of course the answer will be on the back, but then it goes all the way up to 12, the subtraction and the addition. So just various types of fruit. And this has been so helpful when my students are trying to work through the problems. They still might count the strawberries, but that's okay because it's a visual representation of the number. And that's how they learned using monkeys and bears and things like that, bananas. So from this to this. And you know, just like when you roll um, a dice, you know a five is a five because of the shape. You don't count the circles every single time. So there is a visual uh, representation of the number that you also have to get. And it's okay if they count and then they might, or they minus, you know, and they take five and they take away one strawberry and they count again. It's the process of learning and the process is way more important than the product um, in the end, right? Because that's how you learn. So anyways, I wanted to share these flashcards because we really love these um, and they they're double-sided like I said okay so that's math that's the math we're doing this year let me know if you have any questions how I can help you uh, find the math curriculum that you need maybe you do need more open and go you don't want to mess with the vintage I get it I've done it because <laughs> that was just the season I was in and that's what I needed I would love to help you find the math that you need um, or find the style that you are in your educational philosophy so comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.